Good evening and welcome to the 10th annual Thrive Gala. And for the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence, it's 40 years of celebrating survivors. We are so honored to have you all here this evening. I'm Brett Higgins and it is my honor and pleasure to be here in support of the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence and be a part of their mission to do just that ending sexual and domestic violence in Arizona. I, uh, I'm very glad to be the MC for the 40th year celebration. This is my fourth year here and I have to say, I'm humbled by the support shown to this amazing organization. And being well acquainted with the coalition, I speak with authority that your support is not misplaced. But before we get further into the program, which I promise will be inspiring. I suspect that you'll agree that just because we aren't meeting in person this year doesn't mean that we shouldn't get into the spirit of the event, or rather should I say spirits of the event. Upon registration and via email, you should have received the cocktail and or mocktail ingredients for the evening. So hopefully you're set up and ready to go. And to lift our spirits, we're going to welcome our guest mixologist, the traveling bartender. Taryn Rogers is a mobile mixologist with over 15 years of experience preparing libations. So break out your shaker and please welcome Taryn as she prepares a cocktail and mocktail specially curated for the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence. Taryn. In honor of the Arizona Coalition to end sexual and domestic violence and to all of its courageous survivors, I am the traveling bartender and today we are going to have a 10 minute party. Okay, we're going to make two fabulous drinks in honor of this beautiful and such an important cause. One is going to be a mocktail for my fabulous non drinkers and the other is going to be an alcoholic party in your mouth okay so what you'll need for the mocktail you'll need blue hawaiian punch and green hawaiian punch that's right i said blue and green we do not call any hawaiian punch by the flavor it's always the color so blue and green is what you'll need okay you'll also need some cream of coconut and some pineapple juice that is what you'll need for the mocktail so allow yourself a few minutes to go ahead and grab that and for the alcoholic beverage, you'll need a vodka of citronage. So I'm using my absolute citron. And you'll need a blue carousel or any blue liqueur. And you'll need some grenadine and some Sprite. For garnishes, I'm using a pineapple skewer for my mocktail. And I'm using raspberries and blackberries for my alcoholic beverage. Purple Rain. And the mocktail is going to be a pina colada with a little color for the twist. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start on the alcoholic purple rain beverage. All right, so get your vodka. And we're going to do an ounce and a half of that. Mm, smells good. We're going to do an ounce of the blue curacao. And we're going to do a half ounce of your grenadine. Mm. 
and then we're going to add ice to that. So we're going to give it a good shake. Now, as far as the Sprite, we're going to top off with Sprite. I would suggest that you chill your Sprite overnight in your refrigerator because you cannot shake with a carbonated beverage because it would explode and we do not want our drinks to explode in our face. That would be a disaster. So give it a good shake. Now, this drink can also go on the rocks. It does not have to go in a martini glass. I am just putting mine in a martini glass because I want to and it looks good. And I had it chilling because it's going to be up. So I had it chilling with a little water and ice. So after a good shake, we're going to pour it into our martini glass or on the rocks. And it should give you a beautiful, beautiful purple color. Beautiful. And then we're going to top it off with a little spray. Just a little top off. So your drink should look like this. Nice little purple color. And I'm going to garnish it with my skewer of berries. And again, you can garnish it or not. I just always like to garnish my drinks because it looks good. And that's the bartender in me. Okay? So your purple rain Martini should look like this. Nice purple color to go over what we did. We used an ounce and a half of our citron vodka. We used one ounce of our blue curacao. We used half an ounce of grenadine and we topped it off. Remember, do not shake with the Sprite. With the Sprite. We topped it off with Sprite. So, that is our first drink and I'm going to move that on over here to the side so I can get started on the mocktail. Alright. So for that, we're going to use our blue and green Hawaiian punch. Let me go ahead and wipe this out. Because we don't want the purple liquor to get into that. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of blue and we're going to do two ounces of the green. Yummy. Those over to the side. We're going to do an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. And for your cream of coconut, we're going to go two ounces. And you'll probably need a spoon to get it out of whatever you're pouring it into. Or you can just directly pour as much as you want into your glass that you're using to shake the drink. Because you definitely, definitely need to shake this drink because of the cream of coconut. It's it's thick and you want to break it up. And I do recommend that if you're buying cream of coconut, get this one that you can squeeze out. Because um, the can, it's going to be like really hard to shake. Okay? So we're going to add a little ice. And we're going to give it a good shake. You want to break up that cream of coconut, so give it a good, good shake. And for, I forgot to give you guys the option. If you do not have the orange, um, the orange, I'm sorry, the blue and the green Hawaiian punch, you can use full coloring with the pineapple juice and the cream of coconut, just to get the color of the tealish looking color in honor of one of the causes today. Okay? 
that's where we're getting the purple in the tail from by the way so this one I'm going to put on the rocks so I'm going to add a little bit more ice to my glass that I'm using and today I'm using my little, cute little mason jar and then I'm going to pour that right on top and as you can see mine is a little green color again you can add the full coloring if you're trying to really get the color of the theme today it's not going to hurt or kill the color kill the flavor of the drink and then I'm going to garnish that with my pineapple skewer and my stainless steel straw and this is your second drink of the evening and this is your first to go over what we did for the mocktail pina colada we used our blue and green Hawaiian punch we used pineapple juice and we used the cream of coconut again if you do not have the Hawaiian punch feel free if you want to get the color to use food coloring again it's not gonna hurt the flavor of your drink it's just to give it the color all right so these are your two fabulous drinks of the day and I hope that you guys enjoy them please drop me an email or whatever a message at the traveling bartender LLC on Instagram because I really want to know what you thought about the drinks all right so again I am honored to be a part of this cause this very very important cause and I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day. See you next time. Bye. And enjoy. Thank you, Tiran. And we hope all of you enjoy your cocktail. And since we aren't driving anywhere, maybe even a refill. Now relax with your cocktail. And to begin the formal program, if you are a survivor of sexual or domestic violence, we warmly welcome you. And we'd also like to welcome the past Thrive Award honorees attending our event this evening. Please take a moment to welcome both survivors and past and present honorees in the chat. None of this evening's festivities would be possible without the generosity of our sponsors. And we are fortunate to have the support of an amazing Arizona-based organization to serve as our presenting sponsor. Please join me in thanking PetSmart Charities for supporting the coalition and the 10th annual Thrive Gala. Headquartered right here in Phoenix, along with more than 55,000 PetSmart associates across North America, PetSmart can testify that pets make us better people and that pets make stronger communities. If you've been out and about in the Valley over the last few years, you've seen them and you've likely felt their impact. PetSmart Charities is out there in a big way and they are invested in our community and they are invested in the work of the coalition. In addition, thank you to our key sponsors who also made this event possible. They are APS, Barrow Neurological Institute, ASU Office of Gender-Based Violence, ASU School of Social Work, Copper Point Insurance, the Kenrich Group. So thank you. Please show some support for our key sponsors by selecting the clapping hands icon within the reactions option. It goes without saying that behind every great nonprofit, there's a volunteer board of directors working tirelessly to advance the organization's mission. And I say it goes without saying, but I really lied because I'm going to say it. The board of directors do just that. They work tirelessly and they unquestionably advance the mission of the Arizona Coalition to end sexual and domestic violence. I'd like to ask the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence Board of Directors to please wave and be recognized. They are our board chair, Christina Arzaga Williams, chair elect, Carrie Ann Tomlinson, treasurer, Leisha Bowers, 
Secretary, Dr. Megan Lindsey Brown, Christina Martinez, Chair Emeritus, Leslie Beatty, Barbara Quadras, Dr. Brooke Deheer, Laura Horsley, Marina Jessup, Stephanie Noriega, Maria Elena Ochoa, John Sosi, Dr. Glynis Zeman, and Chris Groninger. Thank you for all that you do. And special thanks to the backbone of the coalition, our dedicated staff and volunteers who guide the organization and have helped plan this beautiful event. You can locate staff and board members by noticing the Thrive backgrounds. So please acknowledge their hard work. It's gonna be a great night, both inspiring and fun, as we honor four incredible individuals with the 2020 Thrive Awards. And we're excited for this evening's live entertainment, Mahogany L. Brown. She will be performing an inspiring poem she wrote called She, A Country of Water. But before that, we are here tonight to honor four inspiring individuals with the 2020 Thrive Awards. Each award category is named after a native Arizona plant that thrives even in the most severe conditions. These plants take root in rough, rocky landscapes, yet they bloom when others wither and they're resilient even with few resources. These brave and accomplished award winners here tonight do the very same. Without further ado, our first award is the Desert Sunflower Award. This award honors a person's non-traditional involvement in the movement to end sexual and domestic violence. Let's hear more about our honoree, Christine Groninger with the Arizona Bar Foundation. I was 20 years old when I had my daughter. So I was a single mom, moved out to Arizona sight unseen, didn't know anybody and had no family here and really didn't know what I was going to do. Um, so when I was about 23, 24, I applied to the AmeriCorps program when I moved to Arizona and was placed with a sexual violence program. I had an interview that was three hours long. It was six people on a panel and me, and I felt like I was in you know, a spotlight kind of shining on you. Um, and, and I left there thinking, wow, that was really intense. And I had no idea what I was really applying for at that time. And then just knew on my way home from that interview, this was exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I was so focused on helping one-on-one -on -one or the people that I was working with directly that I run into all these problems were consistent um, among all the people I was working with. And it wasn't until you know, I kind of had that realization, you can actually really impact everybody at once. Working with the law and with rules was very comfortable for me. And so as a transition, I think that's how I came to be working on more legal focused issues. I'm employed by the Arizona Bar Foundation and our mission is access to justice. When someone has experienced domestic violence or sexual assault and they're needing to leave their apartment or need to change the locks or to have a safe place that, that they feel safe to be, I can't stress the importance, uh, whether it's health care, um, employment law, housing law, family law, to address um, more holistically all of those legal needs that victims of domestic violence and sexual assault have when trying to establish safety and economic security. None of us do this work on our own. This is a movement and all of us are involved. I can't think of one industry that isn't impacted by domestic violence or have a stake in addressing domestic violence within our community. And so community collaboration and partnerships are essential to ending domestic and sexual assault. I didn't realize how much public policy 
matters um, and how change on a systemic level can really make a difference for not just one or two uh, victims of sexual assault or domestic violence, but really our entire state. And so I think the collaboration um, between programs addressing public policy is really important. But I also think that addressing the need of legal services on the civil legal side um, is critical and essential. And I'm, I'm really very, very lucky to be working in that space. What I hope to see in the future for the domestic and sexual violence movement is um, a real coming together of all industries, all professions to address policy and the systemic change that's needed. I think we, we have a, a great need and we've done a lot of really important work, but there's a lot more good work to be done. And so I, I think um, what I would hope to see is that we continue that fight and build bigger and stronger coalitions to address the needs of the community and to end sexual and domestic violence. Please help me congratulate the Desert Sunflower Award honoree, Christine. You're incredibly deserving. Now, I'd like to turn it over to Doreen Nicholas. And you'll understand by this title that we feel she's a very important person to the coalition. Doreen is Survivor Engagement and Systems Change Specialist and Staff Liaison to the Share Survivor Advisory Committee and Speakers Bureau. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Doreen Nicholas. So all that to say that the interpretation of that title is advocate, okay? So it's my honor to be the staff liaison to the Share Survivors Advisory Committee and the Speakers Bureau. Share stands for strength hope, awareness, respect, and education. Uh, survivors come to us and get involved to see how, after everything they've gone through, they can be involved and help us in this work. They help us with our education and awareness efforts in the community, our public policy work. Um, and some of them decide that they are ready to share their story, to put a face um, to the issue, to, um, take some of the stigma and stereotyping out of who people think sexual and domestic violence happens to. And you know, all survivors ask of us is that we listen and that we help when we can. And we all have an opportunity to do both tonight. Um, everybody that's here is important. The survivors, the, the programs that serve them, and you, the folks that support those programs and services. So for the next seven to 10 minutes, let us listen deeply with the intent to understand and to honor survivors thriving and resilience. Our first speaker um, will introduce herself as she feels comfortable. It's wonderful to join y'all here at the ACES DB Thrive Gala. I'm Carolyn Curtis, and I'm coming to you from North Carolina. The people and programs of ACES DB have an important role in my life, so I want to share some of that with you tonight. My daughter is a rape survivor, and so I am a secondary survivor, someone very close to the survivor. When I got the early morning phone call, from my daughter telling her father and me what that she had been raped, my daughter's life had already changed. That phone call changed the rest of our lives. First came the knowing of what she had been through and it was far worse than my worst fears. What she told me threw me into a vast abyss of rage and confusion, fear and grief. I knew about an hour after we got the phone call that I would use whatever I learned from that experience to help her and my family 
to help other survivors and to help end rape. But I didn't know a lot of things. I didn't know what it would look like to watch my daughter tell her siblings what had happened to her. I didn't know what they'd look like as the horror of that knowledge flooded their minds and bodies. I didn't know what it would feel like to watch my children's hearts break right in front of me. I didn't know how lonely it would be to be a family filled with rage. I didn't know what it would be to be steeped in a vast and private grief, a grief that couldn't be shared because doing so would betray the privacy of the survivor. Over the course of the next several months, I learned all of that and more. I learned that the horrible process of reporting brings about additional trauma to the victim. I learned that justice and accountability via Title IX are almost impossible for the vast majority of victims because schools think of themselves and act to protect themselves, not to help the survivors. I learned that the right to pursue your education is protected by Title IX, but actually pursuing that education will drain the victim of so much. I learned that money makes schools ignore rape that happens on their campus by their students against other students. I learned that, quote, good people, end quote, stand by and do nothing to stop rape. I learned that people in schools do nothing to hold rapists accountable. I learned that justice and accountability via the criminal legal system is a painful pursuit that rape laws are written in convoluted ways that make it almost impossible to bring charges that will result in a trial. I learned that juries and the vast majority of judges are ignorant about rape and, their, and its impact on the victim. I experienced the ways that rape culture doubts victims and blames them for violence that is put upon them by someone who uses their power and control and makes the choice to rape someone. I've been witness to the devastation that rape has had on my daughter and on the other four of us in our family. After all of this knowing came the getting through and learning how to exist in a world where such violence and hatred had been put upon my daughter and how that violence and hatred impacted her, my husband, my other two children and me. About a year after it happened, serendipity brought ACES DV into my life. My son was an accomplished athlete and wanted to try out for the Olympics, but he needed to move to Arizona to train with his coach. My husband said he could tell that I was drowning in the silence of what had happened to our daughter. And he thought that me moving temporarily with our son to Arizona would be the break that I needed to breathe freely and to regain my voice. After I moved to Tucson, I joined ACES DV and started driving up to Phoenix for every training that would help me in this new work. Living in Arizona gave me the privacy to learn about anti-sexual violence work in a community that was not my own. And I met Doreen Nicholas at that first training. Afterwards, Doreen came over, introduced herself and said that she ran the SHARE Survivors Advisory Committee and the Survivors Speakers Bureau. And she said to me, we don't have enough secondary survivors in this work and people need to hear about how sexual assault impacts not just the survivor, but the secondary survivors as well. How does it impact the families? So for the next monthly share meeting, I drove up to Phoenix and spent two hours in a group of survivors of domestic violence and sexual violence. That group was the first time I had been in a community of people who had experienced horrible things. It was the first time I didn't have to hide what had happened to my daughter. I could show up in my full identity. I didn't have to explain myself. People got it. We were all connected to one another. Shortly thereafter, I went through the Speakers Bureau training and have spoken at multiple events for ACES DV, including at trainings for sexual assault victim advocates and at Speakers Bureau trainings for other survivors. I've spoken to college students at a Take Back the Night rally and to a group of people on probation for domestic violence. In July, 2019, Doreen facilitated a workshop panel 
at the conference for NOVA, the National Organization for Victim Advocates. It's the largest conference for victim advocates. Doreen invited my daughter and me to be two of the panelists. And that speaking opportunity was quite impactful as we talked about how agencies can better engage and help survivors through specific programs. My daughter talked about the survivors art show that she had been a part of at the local rape crisis center in North Carolina, where we live. I talked about the work of ACES DV and their share survivors advisory committee and their survivors speakers bureau. Being a member of the speakers bureau and doing speaking engagements through it has been a huge part of my healing and of my work to engage boys and men in the fight to end sexual violence. What happened to my daughter has changed the lives of each of us. We didn't know how to survive it. We had to get through that whole experience, through the darkness, work our way out of the abyss and do a lot of healing. And after the knowing and after the getting through, we worked our way into the after. Out of our rage, confusion, fear and grief, we now move through the world in different ways. Now, a few years after it's happened, my family of five are thriving within the permanent constraints of our survivorship. Therapists have come and gone or persisted. It varies by the person. PTSD symptoms come and go for several of us. Our need to know where each family member is at all times and whether or not they're safe is a new constant. Education was paused and then resumed various degrees have been achieved. Our six pets have remained a source of comfort and strength. One of them is an emotional support animal and that beloved pet has made an enormous difference in my daughter's healing, in her comfort and in her ongoing success. My daughter is doing very well and yet what happened to her influences everything. How she walks down the street if she can take an Uber ride to her therapy appointment or to the airport, where she sits in a room or a restaurant, what media she consumes and how she interacts with others. After all, to quote the title of a very famous book in this work, the body keeps the score. I've learned so much from my daughter, the survivor. One of the things that sticks with me is the strength it takes a rape survivor to breathe in the immediate aftermath. And then, as she has worked incredibly hard, the strength it took and takes to heal, have hope, develop trust again, and live. I've never seen a person work so hard to be alive, to survive what happened to her and to thrive. Instead of reflecting the hatred that was shown to her, she makes the choice to lead with love. As for me, as I collaborate with ACES DV, working to take the impact they have and expand it into my own state, I'm still a speaker. I speak about the impact of rape either with the Speakers Bureau or on my own. I'm on the board of the local rape crisis center here where I live in North Carolina. And because of what I've learned from ACES DV and all the incredible trainings that they offer, I am much better at my work. Doreen and I are giving a presentation next week at the biennial conference for the North Carolina Coalition Against Sexual Assault. We'll be training other agencies on the work of ACES DV and how the SHARE Survivor Advisory Committee and the Survivor Speakers Bureau can be powerful in the work of an agency and a coalition. For each of us here tonight, as individuals who have or who have not been impacted by sexual violence or domestic violence, each one of us is part of a community that is burdened by its impact. You and I have the opportunity to relieve that burden, to help end these forms of violence, and to help our society achieve its potential. We can do that by supporting the work of ACES DV with our donations. As the famous quote goes, quote, it is not incumbent upon you to complete the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. Repairing the world comes in the daily actions that we take. It comes in the ways we donate our time and our money. So join me. Yay! To support ACES DV and all of their impactful work, your donation ensures that we can all thrive together.
Thank you. Carolyn, thank you for sharing your story and that of your family. Individuals like you and families like yours are what give us hope. And we thank you for inspiring us this evening. Next, we present another Thrive Award. We now have the Cliff Rose Award. This award is presented to honor an individual for their efforts in education, prevention and outreach of sexual and domestic violence to culturally specific and or marginalized communities. Our honoree this evening is unquestionably deserving of such an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, Raquel Balcazar with Secretary of State Business Services deserves our congratulations. My name is Raquel Balcazar and I have been an advocate for uh, 35 years. My main concern is for them to understand and have a broader understanding about domestic violence and what a victim goes through. The strength of a survivor is like, it's, it's, it's mesmerizing to me because trying to put it plain with them and saying, it takes a lot more energy from you living with this chaos and not knowing where the hit is coming or where and because it's not just physical abuse it's the emotional abuse is the putting down is all that stuff once they realize that all that energy that they had you know they can transform to a positive way as an advocate you have to let them know you can see the strength that you have they are so so strong but they don't realize it I let them know little things that they that they tell me that they do, and I go, oh my God, this is so strong, and you're so, you know, you have so much compassion because you're you still not thinking, I, I don't want to hurt him, I I I don't want to, I just want to get out. That's that's being a strong person. When women are at shelter, I can honestly tell them, I understand, I've been there, I, I know how you feel, I know you fear. And, and, and have them, letting them know that it's okay and it, it, we can survive. And, and that we're here to help you and we're not here to judge you. We are here to see, you know, extend a hand and say, I did it and you know, if you need help, I'm here. You can always call me. You can always communicate with me. I'm a good listener. You know, I just don't listen with my ears. I listen with my heart. Who influence, influenced me is actually Beatriz Burgos, who was my advocate when I was at the shop. She, like, I would iron my kids at the shelter. I would iron my kids whatever little clothes that they had, and she would notice that. And she says, you know, you're so awesome. You even iron pajamas, that's so weird. I'm like, no, it's not weird. That's, that's what this person, this my ex-husband, had me doing. Mm -hmm. And so she she let me know that little stuff like that, I don't have to do. And, and focus on, you know, going back to school. You know, you could do it. And, and all that encouragement that she did, I, it got into me. And I'm able to extend my hand to someone that needs it. Because I'm, I'm thriving. I'm, I'm no longer surviving. I'm thriving. Please help me congratulate our Cliff Rose Award honoree, Raquel Balcazar. I mentioned earlier that we had some entertainment this evening, and I'm certain that you won't be disappointed. 
Please join me in welcoming a writer, organizer, and educator, executive director of Bowery Poetry Club and artistic director of Urban Word New York City and poetry coordinator at St. Francis College, author of Woke Baby, Black Girl Magic and forthcoming young adult novel and verse, Chlorine Sky. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mahogany L. Brown. Thank you. Thank you so much for welcoming me. Thank you for having me here. What an amazing event um, and an amazing uh, reason that we're here. I am someone who works side by side and because of these efforts to assure that we can come home safely, that we can be loved safely. And the two poems I would like to share are just poems that hopefully will guide you and give you strength as you move forward. The first one is just um, something I, I tried to think about when uh, considering meditation, especially in a time when it's difficult to remember who you are. And uh, I hope this uh, helps you. I know who I am because I believe it. The breath in my chest, insistent in its choice, the skin that I'm in, the bones and blood and veins it carries like a promise. Have you witnessed the ocean moving with so much gust and life? Have you witnessed the river, still waters bubbling the rebirth of school? Have you witnessed your own body, its own country of water? moving against the tide of a world so hate, so hate, so heartbreaking, it's forgotten its own voice. Be still, friends, be still. Be kind to yourself in this gift of stillness. I know who I am because I believe it. I know. I know who I, who I believe, believe, believe in threes we will come. A drip of water moving against a boulder. Water slow and steady can turn rock into a pebble like anxiety, like self-doubt, smaller, smaller still until gone. Let your love for yourself be the water, be the rise, be the mist, let you be. I know who I am because I believe it. I believe I am my mother's daughter. I believe I am my grandmother's prayers. I believe I am my great grandmother's backbone revealed. I am, I am because I believe so. I am because a woman believed in me. What a continent I became. What a country of water I be. I flow and fluid and rise and ebb, and I believe in me. I am not wrong. I have been wronged. In this skin I've reclaimed from the trap of this country's tourniquet, only to find the sweet solace is a riverbed, its mud beckoning me closer to its silt. Small fish and forgotten glass unearth themselves like baby teeth. Only one can cut into flesh purposely. Only one does not know what it is capable of. I believe in the air as much as I believe in the fire. I believe in the fire as much as the water consumes. I believe in a higher source, energetic and wise. I believe in my ability to thrive. This body, this body, this body is a good thing. Turning two miles walked over a bridge into a family's meal, creating poems that become cashier's checks, dentist bills, and rent. I am, I am still here. I am still here. And like the ocean, full of salt and shells, full of ship remnants and noble ones, I bleed and the sand grieves. I be because someone survived for me to be here today, breathing this almost air marching for cleaner belongings. My front seat beneath the deadening stars is still a seat, is still a ground, is still a home that I can pronounce by its given name, to write amongst the forgotten names, the taken and the ignored. But today, 
Today, there are no tombstones, only life, only life, only a song of the living, maybe even a belief system with water as its minister. I am water. I dive into my own currents. I dress my dreams in the satin breath of my ancestors. I know, I know, I know who I am. I know who I am because I believe it. And uh, the next one, the last piece I would share um, is a proper meditation. And I started working on this uh, sitting in Florida, watching a school of dolphins swim by. And as someone who lives in um, Brooklyn, uh, <laughs> it's not normal for me to just see dolphins. So um, wherever you are, place your feet, both feet on the ground, heels touching the earth, hands on both knees, open your palms up to the sky, close your eyes if you feel brave. If you trust me, take a deep breath in through your nose, hold your breath. One, two, three, exhale through your mouth. Release all the doubt. This poem I want to share is something that I realized I needed as I prepared myself to go out into the world, what kind of armor I was putting on, how I just wanted to return to myself safely. And I hope some of these words stay with you as you prepare every day. Um, wearing armor is difficult, it is heavy, and yet so many of us have to do it because we provide for so many others. So thank you for your gift and your work, um, but also we, we, have, we deserve to work on ourselves. So this is for you. This is for those who make themselves available to so many and rarely have a chance to take a deep breath and think about what you need what your breath requires, what kind of water you like. I like bubbles in my water, who knew? Something new. Okay, so deep breath in through your nose. Hold your breath, exhale down. Deep breath in. Exhale. And one more deep breath in. Exhale. Today you will. And today you choose. Today is yours. Yes, today is only today because tomorrow ain't here yet. So slow down. Slow down. Breathe softly, slowly. Breathe for the homies that ain't here. Breathe for the homies that is. Breathe for your own good skin, your skin, your smile, your you, you, you. Come back, come back, come back to yourself. Look at your cheekbones. Look at the loft of your eyebrows, you so worthy. You so heavy in your weight of yes. You so necessary. You so fly. You wet the water. You cool the brow. You heat the skillet. You the sunset and the sustenance. You keep them chasing the sparks you leave. Today, you will. And today, you choose. And today is yours. Yes, today is only today because tomorrow ain't here yet so slow down slow down breathe softly slowly breathe for the homies that ain't here breathe for the kin that is breathe for your own good skin your skin your smile your you 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 come back come back come back to yourself Miraculous stargaze, most fortunate sky beam. Beyond brilliant, be your resilience. But you knew that already. Who told you any different? You tell them today you will. And today you choose. And today is yours. Yesterday 
is only today. Because tomorrow ain't here yet, so slow down, slow down. Breathe softly, slowly. Breathe for the homies that ain't here. Breathe for the kin that is. Breathe for your own good skin, your skin, smile, tribe. You, you, you. Come back, come back, come back to yourself. Anything that don't heighten your stride, leave it today. Anything that don't propel your wingspan forward, leave it today. Whoever told you you wasn't strong, whoever told you you wasn't fly, whoever told you you wasn't brilliant, whoever told you you wasn't beautiful is a lie. Deep breath in. Exhale out. I hope that helps. Thank you so much. Have an amazing evening. Man, you are an artist. That's a lot more than poetry. Thank you, Mahogany. Virtual hands are not enough, but we'll try. And now it's time to present the final two awards. The Three Heart Award honors a sexual violence survivor who has turned adversity into triumph by creating positive change in the community. Our Three Heart honoree this evening has certainly done that. Ladies and gentlemen, the honoree is Kristen Kiernan of Mariposa Family Services. Kristen. I'm a mother of four. I have three grown young women daughters and a son who's 17. I was physically, emotionally, um, and economically and legally uh, controlled and abused um, and by a very manipulative person. There were times when I almost didn't want to wake up the next day. That's how bad it, it was because the gaslighting and the mental manipulation was really prevalent in, in my case. And I wasn't able to gain perspective till I was able to get away from that. The struggle to free my children from the abuse felt like leaving a burning building only to send your children back in it. And, and that's how I kind of describe it. Um, and so that didn't feel so good. So I, I remember going back to the situation thinking, well, I can at least be a buffer. I'm going to stay and, you know, wait this out. And so I, the thought of, you know, leaving them alone um, just was too scary. But it that became out of my control as well. And um, I went through like three full custody battles and they are battles because you are fighting for your life and for, for your children's lives. I really started to dig into research and trying to find out what can be done to protect um, my children. And that I worked on that for several years. I went through several, several legal processes and watched him manipulate the system. Um, and until I finally, I represented myself and gathered enough evidence and the children finally found their voices too. That was a, a big part of it. I even had to cross-examine my abuser on the stand in, in court. And that to me is the big thing that we're, I was able to do. My son is a special needs child and the abuse just so adversely affected him. Once the children were free of having all this parenting time and constantly the back and forth. Everyone thrived in a way that was so uh, measurable and tangible. I mean, my, my daughters actually skipped grades and graduated early from high school and they just excelled in all these areas that were measurable that I was able to show. So, and my son too, like he, his pediatrician said he was like another person. It was like he was a different child. So the absence of abuse, sometimes it takes that to show just how bad it was. My experience influences my work because I am able to talk to someone and relay that I, I understand where they're coming from. Now I'm in Tucson and I am co-founder and director of Mariposa Family Services. My co-founder Keith Singer is uh, an attorney and he just understands the dynamics of domestic violence in a way that most attorneys uh, don't. We're able to really do some things in court and gather evidence and work these cases 
to a, a way where we were able to protect in a way that the other attorneys were saying there's no way. I made it my purpose to help others who are facing some of the same things that I face. If all of us can support one another who have been through this, you know, and empower each other, gosh, what a, we, we could solve all these problems. certainly deserving. Congratulations, Kristen. Be sure to send messages to acknowledge such a deserving award. Now I'd like to turn it back over to my and our good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Doreen Nicholas. So it, it is my honor to um, introduce or do the entree for our last survivor speaker. And again, um, I think it's apparent what survivors have to slog through to get to a place where they can, can breathe and feel some semblance of safety. So with our next speaker, I'll have her introduce herself the way she feels comfortable. But again, let's take this time to listen deeply with the intent to understand and at the same time applaud the strength and resilience. Hello, my name is Selena. I am honored to be here today and I hope pieces of my story helps resonate and reiterate the importance of donations. My children and my children, pets, and I were all emotionally, psychologically, verbally, physically, financially, and myself sexually abused by my ex-husband. Every day was filled with psychological manipulation and the overwhelming grip of control. This sometimes spilled into physical control through strangulations. In my domestic violence, it was not only my weaknesses, but also my strengths used against me for more control. Everything I love was weaponized. After years of standing in front of abuse for everyone in a house and sneaking dogs out for safety, I came to the realization I could not be everywhere at once. I was only seconds too late from helping save our 18 month old German Shepherd who was murdered. I knew our escape grew more riskier. Her murder reminded me of the del how delicate life is. However, I know it was his reminder to me that he would take anything I love if I went against him. I knew that with this, I had to be very, very cautious, but the days after was so, it was filled with paralyzing fear and warning. I knew that for him, he felt and he would remind me if I disrupted his career, he would take anything that I love from me as well as kill me and he didn't care who was watching. This escape became more urgent when his control and anger climaxed to him, nearly intentionally jowling our son at a military beach. He palmed our son's head under the water and smiled as he gazed back and forth at the terror in both my son's face and my face as our son screamed underwater in terror. I thought for sure the bystanders who gasped at the horror alongside us would help. No one intervened. It was a solo rescue mission that I took on by myself. And after returning to the shore, everyone pretended as if they never seen anything. In the days following, my ex-husband went to sniper school. I thought for sure that this would be our final escape. Unfortunately, he caught wind. He went AWOL and drove 10 hours to make certain we were still in the home. I thought for sure that weekend I would be killed. I left messages on the Army Military Life Counselor's voicemail. That Monday, I received a return call and he advised me to go seek help through the Air Force Victims Advocate the domestic abuse victims advocate called DAVA. Within a week's time, the DAVA 
help myself and the children by establishing a safe plan out. My dad assisted in this escape, flew across the country and drove the children and I 25 straight hours back to Arizona. However, in Arizona, the abuse continued through other, through other means, through stalking, intimidation and financial abuse. Even with a great amount of support from the late Senator McCain in his office, I still was in an uphill battle to maintain safety for the children and I. The children and I went nearly a year and a half between families and then domestic violence shelters when it became too much of a risk for them to house us. At one point, the classified, one of our classified locations was, com was compromised. At this time, it became clear to me, the level of hiding I thought would shield us from his control did not exist. With the levels he obtained from his skills in, in being a Army Special Forces weapon sergeant, his training skill levels with guns and all the weapons he possessed, I knew this was on another scale of safety that I couldn't necessarily navigate through by myself. I reached out to anyone who could assist. Jared from the local Channel 3 News heard my plea and tried to assist. I had an interview and this interview was bittersweet in many ways. The interview, unfortunately, also brought some levels of fear. I actually received, uh, I actually received individuals reaching out to ACSDV um, in an effort to locate me. And this is when they became on my radar and gave me greater confidence in who they were and more respect for what they do. They helped protect the children and I in every way that they could and help with setting up protocols of safety. This interview also gave way for me exercising my voice and enacting more meaningful change. I was graciously invited by, the Senator, by Senator Kirsten Gillibrand's office to be part of what's now the Military Family Protections Act. All of these things and all of the steps forward that I've been making to try to play, do my part in meaningful change has been a great part of, re, of through donations and through support of a lot of organizations through ACDV and others. Mainly, I would say um, this was a great deal through the collaborating forces of ACES DV, City of Phoenix Housing, AmeriCorp, and Arizona State University and their collaboration of the women's study. This women's study has provided us something that I otherwise wouldn't be able to. It helped take a large burden off of my back in providing adequate housing and safety for our children. Due to security issues, I was put in a position where I had to start over 20 years of job history and many years of, of education was erased. In this collaboration through the ACCDV, I've been able to go back to school. I am now in a semester away from obtaining my AA in psychology and um, been able to maintain a 4.0. These are all just few steps to obtain my ultimate goal of receiving a degree in neuropsychiatry. However, most of all, ACSDV and all of the individuals they touch and collaborate with has helped create an actual childhood for my children. My children have been able to obtain uninterrupted healing, experiencing feelings of healing and normalcy in a healthy way that's something that we never would have received an option to in our old home. All of my children metabolize their abuse in different ways. And so this required specialized care and attention that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to devote to my children faced with burden of trying to sustain housing with starting a life completely from zero. With the many collaborations and help, I had great support from the kindness of Arizona Humane Society, who upon my request gave my children impromptu classes of proper treatment of animals. The animal, uh, Arizona Animal Welfare League, who allowed my children to have bonding experiences just by sitting with the animals weekly and later giving scholarships for the children to obtain uh, the experience of animal camps. 
shelter without walls in collaboration um, with with ACDB as far as getting me um, in a position where I can have um, long term guidance and um, be connected to places like Defenders of Children and Arizona Alumni Law Group for a major part and obtaining long term care and safety through the family courts for my children and myself. Through all of this, I've learned that trauma recovery is in a time frame. It becomes a lifestyle and one that's built on healing. This is why ACES DV, Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence, is huge in supporting victims. And I know that this is why they're huge in the success of many victims. Because of donations, survivors are able to not only survive abuse, they're able to thrive out of abuse. And I wanna say thank you to all of those generous donations because they come one step closer to someone obtaining safety and success. Thank you. Selena, you and your children are incredibly brave and thank you for sharing your story with us this evening. It's individuals like Selena and Carolyn who we heard from earlier that inspire hope. Their living testimony to the importance of the impact of the Arizona Coalition to end sexual and domestic violence. ACES DV impact is statewide and the work as you can imagine is expensive. In addition to the grant support received, we need and rely on your generosity to advance our mission and to extend our reach. I ask you to please support this vital work with a donation tonight, keeping in mind that all donations are tax deductible and help support the work throughout the entire state of Arizona. But let me remind you that while we use the words donation or contribution, those words aren't quite as meaningful as the reality. Please know that this is not a cost. This is an investment. It's an investment in real people like Carolyn and Selena and too many others. So what we're doing is not impersonal. If you knew that what you gave tonight would result in a survivor story like Selena's, would you hesitate? Not likely. Yet what you do may net that kind of result in hope. So with that in mind, we're going to ask those of you who have the capacity and the spirit to help realize the goal of providing support to those impacted by sexual or domestic violence, to help put an end to sexual and domestic violence in Arizona. You help do that by your generosity now. So we're going to ask for your generosity at one of a handful of levels of investment this evening. If you're able to lead the giving, with this evening by clicking to give at our first level of $5,000. Think of the impact that would have. It would be tremendous. Please text Thrive40 to 44-321, that is, and make a donation of $5,000 if you're able to support that effort. And please note on the screen, that as people make generous donations, please acknowledge those in, in the chat. Without a doubt, you would be helping to create change if you're able to give at our next level of $2,500. Please click Thrive 40 if you're able to support the efforts by giving at the $2,500 level this evening. Please know that by giving at each level this evening, you're helping provide assistance and hope to survivors. That's no different at the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're able, please text Thrive40 to give $1,000 if you're able. The next level of $500 is not insignificant. If you're able, please support the coalition's effort and mission to support those who need our help 
by giving it the $500 level and texting it to Thrive 40. By the way, that's 44321. Thank you for your generosity. Don't be mistaken. While the next couple of levels are achievable for many of us, they're not insignificant in their impact. If you're able to give at the next level of $250, please text Thrive40 to make that generous donation. To some of us, the next level is the difference between dinner at home or dinner at a restaurant. But it's much more to someone who needs help. Think of Selena. Please give at the next level of $100 by texting Thrive40. Again, that's 44321. If you're able, please click to give $100. The final level may be a level that each of us can give, even if perhaps you've already given this evening. Most of us waste $50 on Amazon and can't even remember what we ordered when it arrives. But that $50 may be far more memorable to a victim of sexual or domestic violence. Let's see how many of us can click to give at our final level this evening of $50. Please text Thrive40 if you're able. You see, our goal is, is lofty, but it, it wouldn't accomplish all the work that's necessary that's accomplished through ACES DV. So please keep in mind that while we went through these levels this evening, uh, perhaps you're able to give some more thought to that Keeping that number in mind, we'll keep it open. If you're able to give $5 or $50,000, please know that it isn't money wasted. It's an investment in people. And I can say that I speak for anyone that seeks help through the Arizona Coalition to end sexual and domestic violence in saying, thank you for helping us. You are exceptional and you're an important part of what gets accomplished through ACES DV. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations are in order for all of our 2020 Thrive Award winners. Would you not agree? We thank you for your courage, your passion and drive to be a force for positive change in our state. You make Arizona a better place and you inspire us all. Thank you everyone for your generosity. When you attend next year's Thrive Awards Gala and you hear real life survivor stories or hear about how the work of the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence is helping to do just that, you'll be able to smile knowing that you played a part in that success. On behalf of the Arizona Coalition to End Sexual and Domestic Violence, we want to offer our sincere thanks for being with us at the 2021 Virtual Thrive event. Thank you for your generous support of our work and for helping us celebrate the Arizona domestic and sexual violence community. I'm Brett Higgins. It has been my honor to be the MC for the 10th annual Thrive Awards. Please accept our thanks. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. We look forward to seeing you next year. Good night.